In this video, I want to continue our discussion of sure systems when each of the individuals in our system has the same independent variables. And at the end of the last video, we derived these two results on the right here. And in this video, we're going to put them together to help us derive a nice succinct expression for beta hat sure under these circumstances. So the first term in beta hat sure is the second result which we derived. And then the next term before the y is the first result which we derived. So in order to derive beta hat sure, we just need to put these things together. So the first term is just omega crossed with x bar primed times x bar, all inverted, times the Kronecker delta product of the inverse of omega with x bar primed. And then if we use our rule for when we multiply two Kronecker delta products, this is equivalent to the first two terms multiplied together times, well, the Kronecker delta product of that with the last two terms multiplied together. So if we evaluate this now, the first term is just omega times the inverse of omega, which is just the identity matrix. And because omega and the inverse of omega are both n by n, that's going to be an identity matrix which is n by n in dimension. And it's going to be the Kronecker delta product of the identity matrix with these last two terms multiplied together, which don't simplify, but they're actually in a relatively simple form anyway. So this is just x bar primed times x bar inverted times x bar primed. And already the second term here is starting to look a little bit familiar. It looks a little bit like OLX. And I should remember that I've got y on both of the on the outside of both of these brackets here, so we can just add that at the end here. Okay, so then perhaps it's now uh, an appropriate time to actually think about what does this term inside the parenthesis here, which we derived, actually look like as a matrix. So if I write a matrix like this, then what we have to think about is essentially what we have is an identity matrix, an n by n identity matrix, where each of the ones has been replaced by this second term of the product. So the first diagonal term is just going to be x bar primed times x bar, all inverted, times x bar primed. And then the second diagonal term would be the same, and we could continue down to the nth diagonal, which would also have the term x bar primed times x bar, all inverted times x bar primed. And all the off diagonal elements, because our first term in our cross product is the identity matrix, all the off diagonal terms in our matrix here are going to be zero, or technically they're going to be zero matrices. Okay, and then I'm actually going to write out the vector y in its uncollapsed form. So when we do that, the first term in y is just y1, the second term y2, and then we continue all the way up to the nth person's dependent variable list. Okay, so why have I done that? Well, the reason I've done that is because when we write it in this form, um, when we multiply these two terms together, essentially what we're going to get out is we're going to get out a row vector. And what are the terms in the row vector going to be? Well, if we take the first row of our matrix, or it's technically not really a row, it's kind of actually a matrix, and multiply it by the column vector, all the terms apart from the one involving y1 are going to be equal to zero. So the first term is actually going to be the product of y1 with this first diagonal term. So the first term in our result is actually going to be x bar, actually maybe perhaps I need a bit more space than that, it's going to be x bar primed times x bar, all inverted, times x bar primed times y1. And then the second term in our sort of row vector that results at the end is just going to be the same term, but it's going to have y2 there. And Hopefully you can see that the last term in our row vector is going to be given by the product of this bottom row with the column vector. And the only term which is going to be non-zero is that involving yn. So the last term in our row vector is just going to be equal to x bar primed times x bar, all inverted, if you can 
take that out. All inverted times x bar primed times yn. And this should look quite familiar. Essentially what each of these terms in our row vector that has resulted are just the results which we would have got if we used OLS. Essentially the first term is just beta hat OLS for the first individual and going through each of the respective rows corresponds to the estimation of OLS on that particular individual's dependent variable and, and independent variables and then the last person is going to be beta hat OLS n. And this is just identical to what we would have achieved if we just estimated OLS on the entire system. Or alternatively, if we just estimated OLS for each individual separately. So what we can see is that under the circumstance when we have the same independent variables for each individual in our system, beta hat OLS is exactly the same as the sure estimator. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that under these circumstances, there's no need to do sure estimation. You can just estimate each individual's equation separately, and there's no problem with doing that. There's no uh, penalty for doing that, unlike the circumstance when there are different independent variables. And there is also this, I, I should also say, there also has to be a degree of covariance and errors between the different individuals. So why is this such an important result? Well, it's an important result because essentially one of the main techniques which is used in multivariate time series analysis is something which is called a VAR or kind of VARs, which means a vector or an autoregressive system. And in a VAR or in a VAR system, essentially we have a system of equations which all have different dependent variables. But the list of independent variables are essentially lags of the dependent variable and other exogenous variables. And what this analysis shows us is that for VARs, which are a very common technique used in many sort of papers which are published today, there's no need to apply any particularly special technique to estimate them. You can just use OLS on each individual equation and OLS under those circumstances should be blue.